Thank you very much. Um, Minister, you're very welcome. I understand the need for this bill, but I wonder how much difference this funding is going to make when it comes to solving the problems facing tourism in Ireland. It seems the biggest barrier facing the future of tourism in this country is hotels. The Irish Hotel Federation has warned that a return to the 9% VAT rate may be needed as hospitality industry faces very turbulent times with forward bookings from Britain and continental Europe are running below 2019 levels. The contracting of hotels across the country by the government for use as emergency accommodation by Ukrainians has created unprecedented levels of hotel scarcity in the country's top tourist destinations, as attested to by the chief executive of Fulcher Ireland, Paul Kelly. A breakdown of the contracts awarded by the state reveals deals worth 337 million with 270 hotels and B&Bs across the country between April and September this year. A spokesman for the Department of Integration said the actual figure is far higher because of the deals awarded in the last quarter of 2022, but said those details will not be released until January 2023. Tourism hotspots such as Kerry, Donegal, Clare, Cork and Galway have a significant number of hotels and B&Bs in use by the state with contracts ranging from 20,000 to 12.5 million. From late November to the end of the year, the government plans to take in 11,000 more Ukrainians, bringing the total to 72,000, alongside over 17,000 persons who have arrived here this year seeking international protection. Contracts for 360 of the 500 hotels in contract with the state are up for renewal this month and the department is expecting the majority to extend their deals. The Irish Tourism uh, Industry Confederation said nearly one in every four tourism accommodation bedrooms is currently being used to fulfil government contracts and the number seems to be growing week by week. Hoteliers and hostel owners accommodating over a thousand Ukrainian refugees are owed millions by the state. Many have not been paid in three months and are threatened to kick their guests out onto the streets unless this issue is resolved soon. Last month, the Department of Children, which is responsible for housing the Ukrainians, nearly all women and children, admitted difficulties paying people and expressed regret. One hotel owner expressed how he'd been owed over one million euros. He is housing between 100 to 200 refugees and is feeding them every day. He had to borrow money from the bank so he could keep the Ukrainians on his premises. A department spokesperson said over 650 contractors are providing accommodation for Ukrainian beneficiaries of temporary protection for the Department of Children, Equality, Disability, Integration and Youth. The government admitted that some providers are still waiting for payments due to backlog, but said the additional staff had been allocated to process payments to hotels as soon as possible. So really, Minister, this is the elephant in the room when it comes to tourism. How is it going to be dealt with? How does one resolve this? I sense a modular home might be involved in the solution. Where will we put these? What supporting infrastructure will be put in place around them? How is this government going to manage to make it sustainable? These are the questions that need to be answered, and I wonder if the Minister can provide any updates uh, on this as well. Also, Minister, the energy costs in relation to our hotels and restaurants and businesses around the country, and the tax warehousing that will be up by the end of this year. Many of those businesses, we may just close the doors next year, so there's a lot of issues that are affecting our tourism trade at the, uh, before the end of this year that you may need to address very, very quickly in 2023. Thank you.